ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, it's time for What Do You Call It Podcast. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of What Do You Call It Podcast. Today's guest is one gnarly ass pro wrestler, one half of Sunshine Machine. He's the surfing and wrestling sensation. Please give up for Chuck Mambo. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> thanks for having me, dude. <laughs> Thank you for coming on, man. It's uh, That's a heck of an introduction. <laughs> no, honestly, man, I'm a genuine fan. I've actually met you at Progress before. Uh, oh, nice. Super nice. Met you twice before. So um, each time couldn't have been nicer so for me to interview you it's you know like a day off really in terms of the podcasting and uh just how you are in person and how you are in the ring so i'm gonna be enjoying this episode and we're also in the same time zone so yes hey <laughs> makes a huge difference man yeah i bet <laughs> so um, i hope you're doing well which is good one thing I want to ask before we do kickstart your wrestling career and talk about wrestling, obviously, but uh -huh. I want to ask because I remember you went viral uh, for giving advice oh, yeah. to Harry Kane when England were playing the last World Cup. So oh, yeah. I have to ask quickly, is it coming home? Do uh, you know what? I've heard a couple of things and apparently it's coming home. <laughs> it's coming home. The American listeners are going to be so confused by this, but uh, <laughs> just, all you have to do is Google it's coming home and then you'll know it's coming home. It's coming home. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't say if it wasn't true. It's good, man. It's good. We're on the same level. Uh, hopefully um, we can go far in the tournament, but fingers crossed. Who knows? I was talking to TK today because I, I don't know how many other countries i mean honestly i gotta throw my hands up i know nothing about football but listening to like other people talk where they're like mm. no it's actually better if we come second because then we don't have to face these like i feel like other countries would just be like we believe in ourselves we'll go like and mm. be first and then we'll just beat everyone else but england's like well we're probably not gonna win but you know yeah if I've we're seen second, that. then like, we won't stay in for longer <laughs> and i think that sort of come back to bite me in the arse especially the fans been going on about like oh we finished second we'll get the weakest but i hate that mentality it's the euros yeah. the major tournament you know just try and win all the time it's like if you was like the first match out in wrestling like oh i don't have to, it's, it's only the first match i have to retry yeah you know? right it's crazy <laughs> like i just hate that mentality and but I, I don't know i think our chances are pretty good to be honest um but if you're not really being to football we've not conceded any goals scored hey, well, that's pretty two good goals, and i think overall we've had like four or five shots on target but yeah <laughs> well, <laughs> it's, uh, it's not been the best tournament so far but it's unbeaten and uh on the right path unbeaten's so. gotta be pretty good you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> but i want to talk about basically because you have wrestled for many many companies and you've made wrestled mainly for progress uh, a company that i absolutely adore a company oh, that i oh, yeah. love love watching um in life which is brilliant which i've mm, I've missed, oh, I can't it, wait. I missed that oh. Um, actually, I'll switch off quickly. What has it been like for you wrestling with no crowds, with no people in a pandemic? Do you know, it was weird, man. To start with, it was so weird. I keep saying to people that ask, that, like, it's kind of like um, if you did a pantomime and you were mm. like, he's behind me. And then the crowd <laughs> can't be like, oh, no, he's not. Or whatever. <laughs> you have to kind of like really change the way you do it. <laughs> um, and then it was stra strange as well, just because there was like so many changing like end goal dates for like mm. the lockdown that like it would be like you'd get into some pretty good ring shape and then it would be cancelled anyway and then like you get into some good ring shape and then it'd be cancelled anyway and then I was like ah fuck it I'll just try and put on some muscle and like not worry about cardio for once in my life and then like a couple of weeks later or something Rev Pro were like oh could you do a show in like two days I was like oh no oh. and then um luckily I had a bit more of a heads up with progress because that was in like january so i had time to get mm. over like christmas and everything <laughs> no I <didn't> but, um <laughs> but yeah that well to be honest i think i was quite lucky because i was so like flattered to be wrestling like us in his return mm -hmm. that i was thinking so much about like oh like us does so many cool moves and like just making sure that like his first match back was like they didn't really have to think too much about like, the awkwardness of stuff yeah <laughs> um and then like yeah just 
that got things off to a good start for me and thing. But the other weird thing about it is that because it's like tapings in a bubble and you mm-hmm. do it over like four days or whatever, like before you'd be doing like one or three a weekend. So you're like constantly in the flow of it. But now it's like the first day, <laughs> kind of shaky. Like, I like, don't know how to do this anymore. <laughs> and then, yeah, it's so like, fortunately, like access hmm. to rings has been a bit easier as time's gone on. They found like COVID safe ways to do it. So you can be more in the flow, but yeah, it's quite strange. And then by the end, you're like, oh, I could do this all day, every day for a year. And then you have to stop and go back to like. <laughs> You've actually been quite lucky though, because I have interviewed some people and they've not been able to do basically fuck all in 12 months. You know, yeah, and where, yeah. where you know, yourself, your mates and your fans can go back and even watch your matches on the WWE Network. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> what is that like? I know I've sort of gone pretty much to the end. But what's that been like for you? Like, because I, I assume you grew up as a WWE fan or at least a wrestling fan. Oh, yeah, fan. big time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was like uh, my, my like main goal for ages. Mm. Yeah. Now, now I, uh, I, to be honest, I think me and Teek's main goal is to get to AEW or, um, or to just make a living like mm. as wrestlers, however. <laughs> like, the, fa- the fans are clamoring. Obviously, we just had another setback. I mean, I'm still kind of getting back to normal. But, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, yeah. I don't really understand. I'm getting so confused right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I fully support doing things safely. I'm just not always mm. sure what the actual restrictions are. <laughs> That's why I'm like, I'm like, I can, I can do this, right? Like, do I have to wear the mask? <laughs> right. I but I don't so think things confused. have gotten more serious again. Mm. The restrictions they're just going on a bit longer. Yeah, it's, it's, it's dragging. But <laughs> like, I think you said it quite well. As long as safety's being taken first, you know. I'd rather not rush back, you know, at the yeah. same time, because people are still getting infected and people are still yeah. dying. So, but yeah. don't want to be a downer. I'm sorry. You can sneeze. No, 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 I'm not. Sorry. I thought you could sneeze then. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not. Sorry. I, it's, a it's a swerve. It's a swerve. Sorry. No, you're saying like people are still getting infected and yeah. 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 Uh, I don't think that we could do like another fourth wave, could we? Like, nah, not a chance. And, and obviously, we'll cripple the economy as well. I mean, I'm not going to make this a, a depressing conversation because you are one of the happiest wrestlers I've ever seen. I don't feel hey. like, even when you weren't like do not uh, DNR, like, yeah, you're still smiling. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm skipping ahead, I'm skipping ahead. So, okay, uh, I'd like to know what was your first memory of wrestling. Okay, yeah. So when I was uh, like, I think about five, uh, my best friend was like a little bit older and he knocked on my door because we play with like all these different types of toys and stuff. And he knocked on the door with like these wrestling figures. It was Owen Hart and The Rock from like mm-hmm. a double set from Woolworths. And um, I was like, oh, they're cool. What the hell are they? <laughs> and then um, turned out they were wrestlers. And then I guess our brothers were the same age. Uh, and they were talking about like Rock versus Austin at WrestleMania. And I always like until I think I only figured out this year that they must have been talking about like the first Rock and Austin WrestleMania one, not mm. WrestleMania 17. Because like I remember caring about wrestling by the time it was WrestleMania 17. So yeah, it, it must have been the first one. But anyway, like somehow I decided that The Rock was the best, even though I'd like never seen it. And then I got like a WrestleMania 9 tape from uh just like a car boot sale or something like that mm. and everyone shares on wrestlemania 9 but i thought it was pretty good i was gonna say like i'm sorry to hear but at the same time like, as a kid like i like wrestlemania 11 and people shit on that so and i bet you like you've I always got a soft spot for it but if you was to watch it now you'd be like giant gonzalez doinks <laughs> <laughs> yeah no no sorry continue continue why not sort of oh like, no 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 I, it's, what was wrestlemania 11 i uh, WrestleMania 11 was I was at Lawrence Taylor and Bam Bam Bigelow with uh, Diesel and Sean Michaels. Oh, sick! <laughs> so I mean, I mean it had King Kong Bundy. And, it's like it's not a bad show. I liked it as a kid, but like if you, it's always voted as one of the worst mass mains. That nine, four, and twenty-seven tend to get shit on by the internet connect, uh, community. But you know, really? like, oh man, massive. oh nine what gets destroyed. Twenty-seven. Uh, twenty-seven. You had the Miz and John Cena in the main event with. Uh, Oh, the rock was the host. Yep. And it originally went out. I think it got like they got both got counted out, and then the rock continued the match, and then uh the rock cost seeing the match, and then the rock rock bottom Cena, and it's just like it's oh such a shite way to end mania. Like I remember watching it live on Sky Sports, and I was just like, this is shite. 
Oh, really? Ah, oh, bummer. And then I literally <laughs> typed it's my keyboard exciting. really loud and cried. And it's like, I'm never going to watch WWE again. And I watched Warriors yeah. tonight, so. <laughs> I think they know everyone's always coming back eventually. <laughs> <laughs> they know, man. They know. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I'm not very good at being critical about wrestling, I guess. <laughs> I just enjoy what I see. And I, I think um, my memory is like not very linear, I suppose, but I know... At some point, I had like a recording of Heat on Channel Four, where it was like The Rock versus the Dudley Boys, and then they all ended up beating up all the Lumberjacks or something like that. And then before I knew it, I was around like my older friend's friend's house, and they were practicing all the moves on me. Ah, <laughs> oh, you was a crash on me, bless you. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, and then you know, here we are now. <laughs> nice man. So you. have basically discussed who your favorites were the rock even though you didn't actually know who he was at first but then you sort of grew to love him and mm -hmm. watching heat i miss watching heat on channel four that's uh, great <laughs> man um what inspired you to become a pro wrestler i think it was something i like literally always wanted to do but then um i didn't i i was kind of one of those people that thought there was like wwe or nothing and just, mm. it didn't seem like really i didn't really know how to, to do it <laughs> like to get it <laughs> but um then my mum and dad split up so my dad moved more into like gloucester the city so mm -hmm. i googled like oh is there a wrestling school in gloucester and then i called up um pro evo and lucky enough i, I must have just misunderstood because i thought it was already running but like pretty much the first weekend that i could go was the first weekend that the school was open so that was cool Ooh, and then time. um so i trained there for a bit when i was a teenager and it was like a good school and stuff but i could only go like every other weekend and then if one of those weekends I was like away. I was like, before you know it, you've got like a month or six weeks without training. And mm. so like, I just, I didn't have like the discipline or the focus or like <laughs> any of that really. <laughs> so unfortunately I sucked for a really long time. But um, uh, I bet you're being hard yourself, but you was all right. Or would you actually, you actually tell the truth, aren't you? <laughs> I mean, I <I'm> pretty dreadful. <laughs> um, which is a shame because when you think about it, I could have really capitalized and, been better than i was but you know you gotta enjoy life as well and whatever yeah <laughs> I agree, but then, man. Uh, so after that i kind of like yeah i just like ended up without the time or the money to train because like I don't know, exams and teenage life and whatever but then i moved to london to do uni and i tried to find a wrestling school there but i still was like terrible at social media and the internet and i like didn't really know much about the indies or anything and um uh what happened oh yes yeah, so i did amateur for a year um which was fun <laughs> wait amateur wrestling <laughs> yeah yeah nice really don't talk about that, that. Was... like was that just so you can get like an option into wrestling yeah basically i figured if that was all that i could find then i'll do that for a bit because that <laughs> would be helpful um and it was it was crazy fitness mm. and um but the problem was you could only do it like once a week and I think, like, to be any good at that, you need to do it, like, at least five times a week, probably mm. seven or eight, I don't know. But um, I did one contest and uh, fractured my rib. <laughs> and oh. I still didn't even know what the rules were. Like, I think I kicked out <laughs> on two on one. Going out of an elbow. <laughs> <laughs> and the ref had already been like, the manager's over, what are you doing, you idiot? <laughs> um, so that was uh, unfortunate, I guess. But And then, of course, uh, eventually... I was in a bathroom in like some club and saw a Defend Indie sticker and then a uh, Defend Indie Wrestling. And I was like, oh, that sounds cool. And then I like mm -hmm. Googled that. And then that led to uh, Defend Indie being at Progress. And then that led to like the Progress Facebook page or something like that. And um, yeah, so then eventually I wound up at the Progress Wrestling School, which is real handy because it was open like five times a week and uh, like half an hour away from where I lived. So I could train like all the time, which was nice. <laughs> and nice, actually, man. as much as I shit on myself as a teenager, like uh, fortunately I had at least like the basics down so that then mm. you could really understand like match psychology and like polishing things and developing in that way, you know? So that was cool. And um, yeah, so I guess somewhere around there, I just decided like, oh, I'll give this a go. I think actually what I said to myself was like, because <laughs> back then being like in the wwe seemed like the only thing that would be mm. important 
but I mean, obviously now we know that there's like a million cool ways to make a living in wrestling that is sweet. But um, yeah, I was like, well, I'll stay in London until I'm like 25. Cause you know, I think I might be close. <laughs> and then I got to 25, <laughs> I was like, I'll give it like another couple of years. <laughs> and you know, I guess you just never leave. I don't know. <laughs> As you said, though, like there is now, I mean, not so much back then when they were doing the promotion for the Defend Indie Wrestling, and even I think when Mark Haskell was in school, Indie Wrestling, his own so were taking it. So, yes, you would make your progress debut. Uh, that, no, your actual pro wrestling debut would be for progress, wouldn't it? In well, I mean, was it not? I suppose technically I just kind of retconned my teenage years, <laughs> which is no disrespect to Pro Evo because I think they run like really awesome shows, but yeah, it's just so good. <laughs> <laughs> And I wasn't even like Chuck Mambo or anything at that point. So then um, my like debut as Chuck Mambo, yeah, was like 2013 at the Endeavor show. Yeah, yeah. I like the Endeavor shows. That was like the development shows for, like, yeah. not, not saying like, not like NXT development, but I mean like it's less known people, people in training still, movement yeah, improvement. For sure. Yeah, it was thing. a trainee show. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's about <laughs> but no, no, I enjoyed it. That was actually my first progress <laughs> show, and it was, um, it was, it was, it was sweet Jesus. You and Eva, oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> it was. Um, no, it was, oh, right. sweet Jesus, such a great tag team. Um, it, uh, basically, for those you didn't know, it consists of uh, Chuck Mambo and uh, the pastor William Eva, who fortunately no longer wrestles. It's, I sent someone on Instagram not too long ago, like such a shame, like just yeah. Such a waste, and obviously yeah. he always speaks high of you, mate. Always like anytime. Oh yeah, you know, no, I love someone him. asks about Chuck Mambo, <laughs> he will, he's the first. He's, oh, he just absolutely respects you so much. Yeah, right back, man. What a great guy. But I've um done, what was he like? You never know. I mean, partner. people are never away forever. <laughs> like, <laughs> or not always. Never say never. It's very fun. Retired about seventy. Never say times. never. <laughs> <laughs> what was um, the pastor like as a tag team partner? Uh, basically, in the ring and outside the ring. Outside of the ring, just like the funnest, um, wackiest guy. Um, and I think like, uh, yeah, he's just got this really kind of infectious, <laughs> like, this sounds really weird thing to say, like zest for life. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> so like, you know, if you go out and around with him, you'd be having so much fun. <laughs> but uh, And he drank like a shit ton of coffee because he was straight edge and stuff. So maybe that was part of it. But, um, and then in the ring, like he has this really interesting sort of, he just doesn't care so much about the modern style of like planning this and this and this and this. He just really like, enjoys so much like getting the feel with the person in the ring and listening mm. to the audience and things and I think that actually worked out pretty well because we were like a kind of simplistic like character driven tag team for the most part you know mm. um but I, that said I'm glad that I was on the same side as him because he hits pretty hard <laughs> he's quite intense when I've, yeah. ever, when I've ever seen him live just but it, it works it, it, you know I mean a lot of people don't necessarily like that style because obviously get red chest after, but you know yeah, it just looks cool. good. I like <laughs> you two. Like you, your opposites, but obviously you know, they say opposites attract, and he just mm. made such a good tag team, and yeah. I really, really enjoyed it. He's just daft and fun as well. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you got like the surfer dude and the religious dude. Yeah, sweet Jesus. <laughs> Only in British wrestling, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> um, one thing I want to ask as well. I think because I'm talking about my life experience as well. Uh, Ooh. Live, live, not life. No one oh, sorry. me. <laughs> <laughs> um, who came up with the idea to flood the crowd with beach balls uh, during your entrances? Oh, do you know that was me? Yeah, <laughs> and it has cost me a pretty penny in the long run. Yeah, I was going to say. Like, so, so progress didn't. Well, actually, uh, the big, the first big show they did at Brixton, um, mm. John actually like paid for like I don't know 200 beach balls or something which was really cool like all printed with hey ho mambo and stuff mm -hmm. but um I think on our like natural progression debut thing Ali was doing some sort of like cane gimmick but with um like fire popper things party poppers mm -hmm. and I was like oh yeah like an elaborate entrance that's cool what do people like uh, I love beach balls when you're at like a gig or whatever yeah <laughs> so I was like oh that'd be cool and then I thought, because I think I'd seen uh, Osprey selling like streamers at the show. And I was like, oh, maybe I could sell beach balls at the show too. That would be cool. But like, obviously, who's going to pay for a beach ball just to like hit it away? 
<laughs> so then I was like, ah, whatever. Like I can just buy the beach balls and then like, it's just a cool effect. Like you make the money back from wrestling anyway. But mm. then, like, over time, obviously the fans like to take home like a memento from the show. Just, I need so that the, back. Will, the numbers go down and down and down. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all right. I'm really hoping that like whatever the first show back we're on, um, like me and TK get to be the opener and it's just beach balls everywhere. Like, Mate, you just put, you find a way to put like uh, one of those masks over a beach ball or something. Hey, you imagine like, a beach ball, like, like chucking it over, but we're all like this, like, we're not like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you ain't know if people are having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun, oh. I promise. <laughs> oh, yeah. man, I, can't, I can't wait for the next live show. I'll see if you can. can imagine, right? it'll be so good. Uh, I, I saw, like, I think, like, I saw once, um, like, Liverpool, Superstars of Jam, they'll do the show, but it's like, I'm not going away to Liverpool to watch a bit of wrestling that I don't know the people, not to take away from it, but I can't watch yeah. Progress and Rev Pro and, you know, yeah, man. yeah, yeah. Because Rev Pro are coming, if things work out, then that's be what back I mean. I don't want to get a ticket just yet because I've already, I've lost a lot of money already from, oh, well, not so really? I've, got, I've got it back, but like, yeah. I bought like, I'll say this on the air, but Craig David tickets it's in South End, and that got nice. moved. I was just like, "Oh, Joe, I'm just gonna cancel it because it's been moved twice now. I just cannot be bothered." And I was just uh, like, "Ah, oh, man!" And then another night is festival with the Venga Boys. It's like just little cheesy shit like uh, that, man. Hell yeah! <laughs> um, that, that got moved to like next year. And I was just like, "Ah, oh, there's no." I'll just get the refund now. If I change my mind, everything goes back fine. But for now, I'll just give me money. So that sort of thing. But I'm mm. gonna wait till a mm. couple of days, and then I will get tickets. But yeah. Oh, yeah, man, that'd be so cool. <laughs> gonna be good, man. man what's Mean Creek gonna be like for you guys? I have not thought about that. <laughs> um, I imagine they'll have like some sort of, I don't know, who knows? It could be like one of those screen <laughs> things, or it could just be completely homemade, couldn't it? And like masks I mean, are optional. The Americans don't care though. Like, what I've seen, like the, <laughs> yeah. the rest I'm not saying that about RevPro, by the way. I just meant in general across the. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> RevPro have actually been mad, uh, not mad, but like really, really professional with the testing and stuff. Mm. No, and that's good on them for doing that. Yeah, yeah, taking it proper serious. So that's been cool. And Progress have got it like real um, mm. strict bubbles and all this taping and stuff. So. It is good that everyone's taking it seriously. It's just <laughs> no, no, I respect that, mate. I mean, I think I think you got to in this day and age at the moment. Yeah, just, definitely. You know what happens yeah. if it is nuts what you see in America, like you say, though, like they don't mean, care. They, they do I mean, it, they do have their restrictions. Out, something cool, <laughs> but, that, but I've yeah, seen, like, just... like certain parts of America. I've just like, have you even been in the pandemic? Like, yeah. And then it makes me think: Are we just being like? paranoid <laughs> but i don't think mm. so i mean like the numbers speak for themselves but <laughs> they stop caring they, they, they just talk with themselves i mean i'm not, I'm not here to bash america we're actually going to talk about you guys in america very shortly by the way um hey. but, yes but um i've actually never been to america but i just like taking the piss out of them because it's funny and you know it's just like a sitcom now it's just like what's your favorite show america you know <laughs> <laughs> oh this week we've got trump and we've got biden and we've got... yeah right. oh, my Lord. anyway yeah. sorry sorry to american listeners i'm only joking Banter. Yeah, you guys are cool. You're good, man. <laughs> so, did you enjoy DNR and being a hill after being a fan favorite? Do not resuscitate if anyone wants to know yeah, this. I was, um, I said to someone the other day, I was surprised because <laughs> Sweet Jesus hadn't been on the show for ages when we turned. So, when mm. we turned, we came out to make a save, and I was like, Excuse me, now I'm gonna burp. I hook up, and now I've got a burp. <laughs> <laughs> This is the most chilled interview I've done, I think. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's cool because I was, I was real glad that they like popped because um, I shoot, I'd just been like in the audience for like <laughs> most of the shows leading up to that one. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, I was glad that they still cared because then they cared even more when we turned, obviously. Mm. And so that was fun. And then it was, it was just quite hard because there was these different things. Like when we first turned, it was like, not four friends it was like four just mutually interested people mm. who had to sort of do a bad thing or whatever and it, we were going to kind of tell that story of like I didn't really want to do it but I just kind of felt like I had to because like what's your options like not be on the show or be on the show mm. and so that's kind of a nuanced thing to tell but then so many of the angles that we had to run kind of required like teamwork and like didn't 
leave much room for like that kind of nuanced storytelling, if you know what I mean. Or maybe, I mean, I'm sure it could have been done. I just like <laughs> didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I w- I didn't do it. It's a less a learn for a lesson for next time. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> but like, yeah, trying to sort of like balance all these different things. So that was like a little bit of a shame because I quite like the idea of like a, a good person on the bad side, but like. Mm. And then slowly corrupting. But the way it kind of played out, I ended up being like a cheeky shit heel. Yeah, I was going to say, that, <laughs> whatever. you're still like, a, you're still yourself, but just more of a dick. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Well, one time I heard someone say like, all the things that they love about you are the same things that they'll hate about you. So I tried to kind of take that as the basis, like still be you, but just like on the other side, <laughs> kind of like Van Damme when he was in uh, the invasion or whatever. And he was like the only person from the invasion everyone loved. Nice. <laughs> but, um, Big up to the invasion storyline, by the way. Big up. Hey. Big up to the yeah. invasion storyline, man. <laughs> yeah. I have a soft spot for it because I grew up on it and my band yeah, saved it. <laughs> but um, yeah, so no, I did, I did really enjoy it. It was like, just kind of like I say, like hard trying to always know like what type of bad guy to be. Because obviously I'm not like a tough guy, bad guy. Mm. But like, um, was I like remorseful or was I like fully into it? But it was fun to like get to experiment with it. And I got to experiment with it like more as well beforehand at attack doing like nothing to prove. So that was like really fun, like getting to kind of try it in different ways and stuff mm. and take it different places. So yeah, it was good fun, man. I really like that, you know, I like the theme as well. Like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I gotta be honest I never quite knew when we were supposed to like come out <laughs> <laughs> I had to send this snippet to my mate he'll love this bit because uh, I remember we watched it he's just like dude it's a theme up it's, yep yep uh, YouTube it's <laughs> such a one time I had to run from Gorilla like across like maybe two floors of the backstage at the ballroom to find pasta who was just like brushing his hair or something (laughs) 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 especially with the hair as well it must take ages with his bloody hair (laughs) yeah well yeah (laughs) that's wicked man honestly it's just such a shame i mean spike i think spike's a tremendous hero i really like him um, yeah, great. No, I, just, I just thought it was a good faction. I just thought there'd oh, be a bit more for it, but I think that was kind of affected with like, suspension and the pandemic, you know. But it is what it is, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I think there was some pretty cool plans in the works. Mm. Um, but, you know, I got to say, I am happy just being able to kind of reset a bit and just focus mm. on like me and Teeks and stuff. So I am, it, it's a real that, good I'm atmosphere, right? like backstage at mm. Progress as well. Like just everything's so positive and chilled now crazily are doing like some of their best work like now mm. in front of no one <laughs> so hopefully they're still doing it when they uh should win the conference in a way doesn't it it's like in a way it's like going back to sort of basics in a way like when you wrestle with no people there sort of training i can imagine i'm yeah, i'm actually saying i mean in a way i'm probably talking i'm talking about my ass because obviously I've, i'm not a wrestler no, no, i've done one like training though and i'd never do it again because it's not for me but <laughs> fair enough better to make the choice early i think <laughs> that's it man at least i'm not wasting their time my time so everyone's happy um, as you mentioned him and i was gonna ask him as well um just in a few seconds but i'll ask him about him now because i'm a fan of him as well tk cooper your current hey. tag team partner but you've also yeah. feuded with him i want to know what is he like as a tag team partner and as an opponent he uh sweet as both i gotta be honest with you yeah really cool um i think like as partners well I, I, to be honest i think it kind of works both ways because it's the same or a similar process anyway mm. like uh i think we enjoy a lot of the same style of wrestling and like a lot of the same humor and like we think the same things are cool so usually like one of us will come with an idea and the other one will either just immediately love it or be like oh yeah and then you can do this and then you can do that and like or whatever and then we're either like really excited or like laughing our asses off or whatever so like um yeah it's really like real like just easy <laughs> i think is one of the cool things about it and um and then <laughs> just a funny story from riptide i think uh i think it was the second one but it might have been the first yeah, I think it was the first actually time that we read. Re- well, the first like big one that we had. Is that the company time. in Brighton, the Riptide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, 
<laughs> we'd like done something, 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 and then we got to like some big high spot, boom, and the crowd there are really cool, and they were like, they're really loud, and he's just like, oh, I love this man, <laughs> and, I it, and I was like, yeah, I love you too, man. <laughs> <laughs> he just looked up from the mat and goes like, that's not what I said. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah no it's real fun as well like um yeah just getting to like uh because we live together at the moment so mm. just getting to spend quite a lot of the day being like hey i wonder if you could do this i wonder if we could do that <laughs> like just brain fart ideas for wrestling all day <laughs> that's that must be fun though like it's not just a forced tag team like you've got that natural, natural chemistry you're both chill things in common you know you can bounce off each other that's good I like yeah that, yeah man. it's all good man yeah I'll nice. take Maybe one day there'll be like sweet sunshine machines, us <laughs> something like that, where you get to merge all two. I think teams. you can make it work, but not <laughs> if you say it again. <laughs> you have to say it a few more times. <laughs> 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 if TK right, is listening, well, need some, some, some work if TK <laughs> is listening, would you want to come to the podcast? Let me know. <laughs> I'll ask him. <laughs> nah, sweet, man. Sweet, sweet, sweet. <laughs> As you've been a progress wrestling from the beginning, <clears throat> from making your debut, obviously we talked about the one before, Pro Evo, but but um, hey, you've got you've wrestled, <laughs> you've wrestled at Wembley, you've been a lovable baby face to a despised faction. What have been some of your highlights of your career in progress? Yeah, um, I mean, the first one that comes to my head is probably always the, the Zack Sabre match, just because that was like, wild <laughs> getting to wrestle him he was like on my first list of i think i made like three wrestlers where i was like i want to wrestle these three people mm. and um like he was he was on there um and i got to do it on like my favorite event as well because <laughs> like the super strong class 16 was always like the coolest thing to they're make. fucking wicked those tournaments <laughs> so cool um so that's definitely like one of my my real happy memories for sure. Hello everyone, I have a special announcement for my next guest. What is happening wrestling fans and podcast fans alike? It is me, it is Chuck Mambo, uh, one half of the Sunshine Machine. And I'm gonna be on the podcast, but the only question is this, what do you call it? <laughs> do you see what I did? I can't be the first to do that. Now, let, tune in and listen to the podcast. You heard. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so just had to cut off there. A bit of technical difficulty. You were talking about your favourite matches and memories. You mentioned uh, a classic with Zack Sabre in progress. Uh, yeah, actually, and actually another one super from Super Strong Style Classic. Me. When me and Pasta came out for a street fight, we'd find like a trolley backstage. <laughs> or like just in Camden somewhere because it's like across the road from a Sainsbury's or something. And like, it was, it was like fun getting the fun pop like coming out. Um, but it was more... <laughs> <laughs> fun because pastor is normally like so um i not overconfident but like very confident and um like in control and things and i just had him in this trolley running around camden and he seemed so scared <laughs> <laughs> but i think uh maybe i'd had like a beer or two that was putting him on edge and uh, <laughs> but it was really funny and then another great one obviously um was uh getting to wrestle at Wembley because I mean we were like the pre-show and it was a rumble but um because I guess because it was a rumble it felt like pretty low pressure but mm. then it got to like the final four and we were still in there and my arms just went numb because i was like oh shit this is pretty sweet <laughs> and just like i don't know i suddenly got nervous. it's a rumble quite it's a, it's a battle royal quite a hard match to do i, I know that's sort of like a like a stupid question i don't know oh, i don't know maybe it's for me just the way i've asked it but i'm, always, mm. I'm just quite intrigued because i don't think it's a stupid question a lot of people make the debuts in battle royals so i just want to ask uh -huh. quickly, like what is it like being in a rumble how is it sort I of think, laid out and formatted? Mm, I think they're like hard to easy depending on like how good you want them to be. Like you can, they're an easy one to get through just to like help someone have experience in front of a crowd. Yeah. And you don't have to really plan anything because there's so much chaos going on that like you can pretty much just punch and kick, I guess, and that would be fine. But to like really give the crowd their money's worth and like have it be really good. 
obviously you want to run like cool multi-man high spots and stuff like that mm. and then like that gets more hard just because of like the space of things and like i've been in a rumble or two where like literally everyone's entrance was like mapped out and there was this like giant spreadsheet type thing backstage and it was like and this person will come in here and then there'll be and so like um so that was that the one in, was that in the was that two was that ali pally when you use no, no, actually um riptide who ran like a real tight rumbles just mm. like really really entertaining although i think the ali pally one might not have been far off with the planning do you know because it was mm. It was like so a maybe lot. you got quite far in that one. Yeah, I did all right in that one. Yeah, did all right, did all right, man. I, mean, I think um, what's his name? Dragonoff took like, a nasty landing. Though. I remember that. In that uh, oh, is that right? Yeah, uh, I, there's this person that won it, which I won't say, but um, it was a, your performance. It was a good though. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah no. Um, so. One of the easier ones I've ever been in was the one at Wembley because I think like Ricky Shane Page and maybe Ross, like uh, RJ Singh were like, uh, right, here's how we're going to do it. <laughs> and like, they still let everyone call all their stuff, but they just like, were like a real helpful guiding lead, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, no, they're kind of like as hard or easy as, as, the output you want from them if you know what i mean they can be yeah, easy no, okay. yeah, it, they can be easy but it depends how many spots and how difficult you do actually want to make it so yeah i mean that's the first one i ever watched the one um at ali pali i think it's one of the last shows i went to before oh yeah covid but um yeah mm -hmm. man it was good it's yeah that was a good show but one thing i'd like to also ask is what's it like for you because we mentioned it earlier what is it like for you going across the pond and wrestling for CZW Combat Zone Wrestling. Because this is quite kind of early in your career, I suppose, wasn't it? Yeah, really early in my career. Mm. <laughs> um, it was really cool, though, yeah. I made a mistake because I was actually going to go to America already because I had some friends over there and I was like, oh, well, when I'm 21, I'll come over and we can, like, party and stuff. And then um, Drake Younger had been doing, like, a series of um, seminars because he was, like, leaving the indies. Mm. And he was like real upbeat and positive and nice and like added me on facebook and i was like oh man like i'm gonna be in america is there anywhere i should go and he was like oh go hang out with djz um uh, not djz dj hyde <laughs> <laughs> uh and that was in new jersey and i was in new jersey so yeah. i figured like new jersey was like the size of a city in England and you'd just be able to drive across every day. <laughs> I didn't realize it was like the size of England. <laughs> just one town. It's scary how big America is, man. Yeah. I mean, it is a state. I, it's my fault for not understanding the difference between a state and a city, but like, um, so it ended up being different to what I thought it would be, but I think more exciting, like just traveling around and then like coming here and there and staying in like weird american cheap motels and stuff um but they were like super duper welcome in there and really nice and then they ran these dojo wars every wednesday um which was like kind of like i guess just like a trainee show that goes on the internet and stuff mm. and i mean i thought i was like way better than i was so i was really confident <laughs> more confident than i should have been <laughs> um but everyone was really nice and things and then they gave me like a squash match on a buy pay-per-view um in like an ice rink somewhere uh and it's pretty funny i like came out i was doing the whole like hey i'm chuck mambo thing and some guy just goes like who the fuck is this guy he doesn't deserve to be um, but no, it was still a super duper cool experience, man. And then getting to go over, I was going to say last year, but I guess with the pandemic and everything, maybe like two years ago, but like, um, crashing with was it? Sammy Callahan and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And doing like Revolver and Rockstar and Impact. Like, yeah, really, really cool. No, no, that's fine. So you, you even though besides that one loud fan, <laughs> giving you a bit of shit. Maybe um, he's right. I probably didn't. <laughs> 
okay, I was to say that to be fair, but no, it sounds like you did have a good time still. And I was about to say something stupid, but you just answered your own question, would you want to go back? And you pretty much just answered that for me. I would love to go AEW, back. AEW, yeah, yeah, got your absolutely. eyes set on that as well. Hmm? Uh, uh, AEW, you've got your eyes set on that. Yeah, said, man. You yeah, and TJ. Yeah, yeah. That'd be good, man. Well, they're coming over here in November, so that were, if they need some British Is talent, right? get your eye out. Or, or we can go Very see nice. Fozzy instead if you want, if you're a big fan of them. But, um, <laughs> well, I really like that one song. I don't much <laughs> that. Judas is great, it's wow. a hell of a song. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't mind them. I think I just a bit of a throwback. I don't know. I don't, I thought they were a parody at first, like a piss take. Oh, really? Ooh. Yeah, Ooh. like, um, I like, oh, what's that? I can't remember that band now, but I just I didn't realize, oh, that's actually Jericho being serious, but you know, at least he's right, yeah. He's doing more than me, you know. I guess it's like a real over. I suppose it's a bit like wrestling, really. Like, if you don't like it, then it probably mm. does seem like a. Oh, I love Jericho. Like, Jericho's one of my favorites, man. World. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's huh? Jericho. I love Jericho. I'm just saying, Fozzy. I, yeah, I'm not yeah, gonna yeah. be getting a ticket though anytime soon. Fair enough. <laughs> but then again, no, <laughs> Venger Boys and Craig David. Who am I to judge anyone's <laughs> opinion on music? <laughs> God, I'm not even going to cut this bit out because I just I don't really care. No, I like so, it. Yeah. <laughs> wicked man. So. When you're not wrestling, what do you like to do in your spare time? I'm going to assume surfing is one of those things, but that might be a bit hard in London, if you are in London. It can be hard in London, <laughs> yeah. Do you know, like, um, early on at Progress, uh, I was like, ah, oh, Jim, I, I don't know, like, uh, character ideas and stuff. And he was like, well, I bet you are on a surfboard, right? And I was like, I do. And he was like, well, <laughs> maybe just start with that. And I was like, okay, yeah, all right, cool. But pretty much since then, I've been surfing like a handful of times because most of my weekends are spent wrestling. Well, they were anyway. Um, and I did not capitalize on the pandemic. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm quite, I'm, I'm quite surprised to hear about this, man. Yeah, right, weird. Like, uh, I, was, I was a pretty all right surfer, like, mm. when I was a teenager. But then, yeah, it just turns out, Pursuing wrestling really does take a lot of your time. <laughs> nah, that's fair, man. I was expecting to hear, oh, I've done a bit of wrestling, but a lot of surfing in like Brighton or something or wherever. Yeah, well, maybe one day I'll get the balance more in our favor. <laughs> I had a really good week one week where, like, I think there was like a show on a Tuesday and then a progress. Ah, what was it called? It wasn't Endeavor. It was like Freedom's Road on a Wednesday. And then on the Wednesday night, I went to the airport and then like went surfing for a week. So that was a really like nice time. But that must have been like five, five or six years ago. Now. <laughs> nice, so, yeah, that's weird. But um, what else do I like to do? Oh, I bought some rollerblades. I watched them. Um... I'm sorry, I'm bringing down the <laughs> of your show with all this gas. <laughs> um. I'll put a disclaimer. I watched uh, oh, Mighty Ducks Game Changers. Did you oh, it's quality. I saw it. Oh, yes. yes. oh my God. Visual, <laughs> my virtual high five, Chuck. I love Mighty Ducks and I love the Game Changers. I was a bit, the only thing I will criticize it for is the lack of cameos, but that was because they could only get so many of them in because they had to stay in a hotel for 10 days. I really That's why uh... we couldn't get, like, um, you know, uh, Joshua Jackson, um, Conrad. Uh, what's his name? Conrad, isn't it? Connie? No. The, the captain, original one from Charlie the trilogy. Conway. Charlie, that's it, Charlie Conway. Yeah, yeah or we, we didn't, didn't get him. him. Oh, no, yeah, but I think they've planted seeds because obviously he was supposed to attend, but they were like, Oh, you oh, didn't see yeah, him. Yeah. I did yeah. not think I'd be talking about Mighty Ducks. Yes, oh uh, man, I fucking I've loved Mighty Ducks pretty much as long as I've loved wrestling. <laughs> Go, <Berg. laughs> and yeah, the show is so good. That I like drunkenly at three in the morning was like, I'm buying rollerblades. <laughs> <laughs> and I finally found some in my size. And um, because they were like out of stock in London, they just couldn't find them, I found. But then I thought I'd be as good now as I was when I was like a teenager. <laughs> I had to get like a lame helmet because I was like, well, it's not worth not being able to wrestle because you hurt. I'll saw your ankles the next day after. <laughs> and then loads of London, of course, is not like smooth terrain so i was going down i was like going down the street just like Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> looking like an idiot <laughs> this is not how i managed at three o'clock in the morning <laughs> i was doing a little bit today and uh pretty good i'm pretty good now <laughs> nice man i've never done it never attempted to do it i've tried skating because of the mighty ducks when i was a lot younger and uh -huh. i was just like 
looked like I shat myself. Like it was. Yeah, sure. Uh, no, the ice didn't like me. Me and the ice just don't get on. It was. No, it it's a bad relationship sometimes. Oh, it was ice skating. Yeah, man. Uh, oh, but really? the players themselves. Like, that's why, because I can't ice skate as well. And my brother broke his um, his arm when we were younger. And it just it just put me off. So I never bothered. And I was enough. like, because yeah, I've got weak ankles is that from football and stuff. And just, oh, uh, I'm not going to risk it. Plus, I'm very lazy. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> just being honest. Good to your strengths. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sweet, man. Sweet. I'm... So glad because I've, I've talked about quite a lot with you so far. Wrestling, White Ducks, it's coming home. It's coming home. Growing up, <laughs> WrestleMania 9, uh, Willie Mever. <laughs> oh, yeah, 9, 11, 27. Thank you, Yeah, What was four? Uh, four was terrible. Four was the tournament, so for the vacant title. So, other than oh. DBS in Macho Man, you had it was like, oh, it was just slow matches. Like, oh. um, what's his name? Domorocco and Valentine and just one man gang and <laughs> it's just really boring. Hogan and Andre <laughs> without obviously with the build from the third one they got away with it. But this one, it's just so boring. It's ah. I mean, don't if you want to go for an early night tonight because we're in the same time zone, do it. Put WrestleMania four on, and I, I promise you, you will fall asleep or watch Game Changers again. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> How cute is the kid that like starts off as the um commentator or whatever? Oh, the podcaster kid. Oh, he's great, he's so man. Impressed. I really like it. I just thought like it, the way that they sort of introduced, I won't spoil this because there are people that might have watched it, but how they mm. sort of, the game changes, um, you know, how they build it up and how they gel as a team and how Coach Bombay comes back into it. It's yeah. really well done. And I, I, yeah, I really, really cool. so much. And huh? Even with the cameo episode, when some of them come back, I was just like, I miss you. Yeah, I think I cried quite a lot. <laughs> and I'm happy as well. You know Goldberg? Did you see what he looks like in real life? Like, we, he, had, um, he sort of fell out the wagon for a couple of years. He looks really bad. So when you finish this episode, Google mm. Go, uh, Goldberg, the actor. I think I did see that, actually, yeah. He's, he's right now. He's, he's, he's been out playing now for last year. But he had that uh, period. I was just like, you're not going to see 40. Like it was. Oh man, that's heavy, man. Mm. But he's fine now. He's fine now. That's, awesome that he's turned it back around, though. That's cool. That's it, man. That's that's one thing I love about this podcast so far. And I um, will wrap it up as well to get you. Because I uh, don't want to bore you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's one thing I love about this podcast and introducing, um, not introducing, interviewing you. It's your positivity, always smiling. You know, you don't hear anything bad that like Chuck Mumbo. It's always positivity. As I said, like at the beginning, William Eva has nothing but good stuff to say about you. And oh, he's wow. very, very, uh, he's very honest. <laughs> we know that. Um, <laughs> but uh, to officially end this interview, to wrap it up, I want to ask, what's been your favourite match of your career so far? Because you're still quite, you're pretty young. People forget that. I guess I'm, I'm all right, young, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that, that is a really horrible way to end it. <laughs> Disconnect. <laughs> Um, oh god, I got some. Uh, I've had some really fun ones, you know. The the one I had with Ace Austin at uh, Wrestling Revolver was like one of my all time favorites for sure. Um, the one with Zach will always uh, be a real favorite of mine. Um, oh, let me think. Oh, and yeah, like both the ones that I had with TK at Riptide were like equally my favorites for different reasons. <laughs> nice man. Have you got your eye on anyone that you've not wrestled yet? Too young. I really, really want to wrestle too young. <laughs> Didn't expect that. Fair play. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I would love to wrestle Sammy Callahan and Driller Dan Maloney in a singles. Oh, damn. He's quality, man. He is the man. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I don't know how much of that's like a gimmick. Like, he just just mm -hmm. looks... <laughs> I think I've got, I've got a photo of him once at the show. It's like... <laughs> yeah, he wasn't rude at all. Like, I've like some of the American stuff I've asked like that now, but I was just like, cool. <laughs> yeah, he's like the sweetest dude, but like, yeah, definitely probably the toughest. <laughs> yeah, he does. He's cool. Man. I really like his work, man. He's he's awesome. But um, where can fans find you on social media? Ooh, uh, at Chuck Mambo on 
things. And <laughs> sunshinemachinerules.bigcartel.com for one of these bad boys. <laughs> oh. Nice. I'll put that all in the description. I want to thank you very much for coming on for this podcast. It's been thank brilliant. You, really enjoyed it. Jenny cracked up. Yeah, it's been great. Voice is a bit dry, man. But um, it's been a pleasure speaking to you. For everyone that's listened to this episode, thank you. I do have a surprise coming up next week uh, about a guest announcement, but I do have more guests that I announced on Twitter. But this episode will be coming up very shortly. I don't really actually know. You're, not, you're really listening to the episode. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that doesn't make any fucking sense. Yeah, right. Okay. So <laughs> uh, thank you all for tuning to What Do You Call It podcast. Here is a word from my sponsors. Take care, bro.